Hi, I'm Nick Fluck. I'm the medical director for NHS Grampian. By background, I'm a nephrologist and I've been here about three and a half years and up in Aberdeen for 18. Hi, I'm Stephen Hayes. I'm head of the School of Medicine, Medical Sciences and Nutrition. One of the surgeons here, I'm not going to say how long I've been here, but it's uh, quite a few years, as you probably knew. Fantastic. I think it's good to catch up, Steve. We were both at the board meeting last week and the board approved the outline business case for the Anchor and Bear Family Hospital, which is going to be, I think, probably the most expensive ambitions ambitious development we've had in NHS Grand Pym for many, many years. And that should see clinical services coming on stream in about four years. Now, I know you've had a lot of involvement with the anchor work. Do you want, do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, the anchor work's been really exciting because, as you know, here on this site we treat most of the patients with cancer in the region, and perhaps we've never really brought in a really world-class cancer research team to add and to support clinical colleagues. So we've been working, as you know, we're both cycling 500 miles around the uh, north coast of Scotland for this, so we've been training. But the important thing is we're well on the way to raising about five million pounds that we need to bring in a world-class team yeah. and the great news is that last week we appointed the first member of that team a professor of molecular cancer studies and that's brilliant because that will be the start of the team that will build around so that's really been exciting. Okay so in terms of that team so that's obviously someone who's got you know a pure academic background how are we going to combine that together with our clinicians? It is, you're absolutely right. That's the laboratory, the laboratory backbone of the team, if you like. So what we're also doing as part of that bid is we're appointing a professor of cancer medicine who will yeah. be a clinician working in the clinic and two senior lecturers who will be consultants as well. And half of their time will be in the clinic working with the excellent colleagues that are already there in the anchor unit and they'll all work together and tie it in together. So it's the laboratory team but it's also really importantly the consultants consultants who will be appointing who will make that work together and gel it all together. Yeah and I'm pretty sure that when that comes together that will be a huge attraction for uh, bringing people up to Aberdeen. I mean I think one of the things that we've all recognised is that the uh, supply of doctors and recruiting doctors up into the North East is pretty difficult um, and we do know that fundamentally if kids who go to school up here go and train to be doctors here, there's a much higher likelihood that they come back here. So right at the other end of the spectrum, what are we doing about getting our medical students in place? Well, as you say, firstly, the, the, the cancer team will attract and attract more doctors, but going back to medical students, we've really taken that on and we've really worked hard to look at novel ways of attracting students from the region, from the north of Scotland, to come to Aberdeen. And really excitingly, the work with the college here, with NESCOL, with NHS Grampian ourselves, has got a new programme called the Gateway to Medicine programme, which offers the opportunity every year for 20 students who never before would have had the opportunity for whatever reason to study medicine to be able to do that and, and we're going to do that again this year so that's 40 in total. I think really importantly are some of the initiatives we've also been doing. So you probably know that some of the students around the North East or in the North of Scotland don't have the opportunity to study chemistry so we're now yeah. opening up the medical course to students who don't have chemistry because what we're doing is we're doing the chemistry when they come here and also we're working hard with schools where pupils have never thought they could do medicine or they could have the opportunity to increase that so all of that I think is really exciting work that the team's doing and that'll help us to get more doctors to work here in the North East and the North of Scotland too. Yeah. No I think that would be really fantastic I get a chance to meet the sixth form kids on something called the Doctors at Work programme and what's really clear is that there's a little bit of an information gap for the schools and starting to get it out there that there are opportunities from all schools, that we've got some schools that have never sent a child to do medicine and we've got to change that. And we'll specifically work with those schools and that's what we're doing with the team is going to the schools where pupils have never studied medicine and really telling them how they can do it, how they could do it and how we'd like the, the students in those schools to apply for medicine. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. And in terms of sort of other clinical academic posts, so we've got a big push in terms of the Cancer Centre and that's a big £5 million project, 
What about our other sort of efforts in terms of clinical academic recruitment? Yeah, that's been important to us because over the last couple of years, two or three years, we've had a lot of retirements because people have come uh, to retirement age. So we've really been pushing to develop new areas, to develop areas where we have your expertise, or research expertise. I think it's exciting just recently we've appointed our senior lecturer in forensic medicine, which is great, appoint senior lecturer in rheumatology. I've mentioned to you about the clinicians we're going to be appointing in cancer medicine. Yeah. We're about to advertise for a professor of anaesthesia too. So we've really focused, we're really trying to increase the number of clinical academic consultants. And I think what's really been great is the way many of the services in the hospital have identified younger colleagues who are at trainee level who for the future wish to undertake academic medicine and become an academic consultant. So a huge push to increase the number directly, but thinking about the future, thinking after your and my time, and we're putting into steps ways to do that and to encourage colleagues. And that's really been good because an increasing number over the last 18 months have come forward and expressed an interest to become a clinical academic consultant. Yeah, yeah. and I think we both agree that that creates an environment that improves recruitment and fundamentally is good for patient care. Absolutely, we know that patients who are looked after in such a way as you describe actually do get better yeah. care and it's important for the future I think of both our organisations here as we work together. Okay. All right, that's, that's great. And yeah, we, we need to look forward to our next uh, training run. <laughs> we do. We certainly do. But I think if anybody who's watching this has any ideas or if they have any thoughts about how we could work together, then I know yeah. that Nick and I are always delighted to hear from them because I'm sure that, that you guys could have many better ideas than Nick and I have. Well, I think that's probably an update yeah. we're going to do. But we'd hope to do this every six months or so to keep you updated of what's happening, how we're working together, and the exciting things that are happening here in the northeast yeah. that's fantastic cheers